It's Friday night. You and your friend Jason are on your way to the Fazbear Horror Attraction at the local amusement park. Apparently they're getting it all set up for the Halloween season, so it's in kind of a demo stage right now. Your friend Jason tells you that it's supposed to be a standard haunted house type attraction, only themed to the Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria and the horrific events that occurred inside of that place. It's decorated with actual props from the place, which should be pretty cool. It's been 30 years since the place shut down, and yet rumors and theories about what happened there are still lurking the internet. You and Jason have been obsessed with the Freddy Fazbear mysteries your whole lives, and this seems like the closest the two of you will ever get to experiencing the supposed horrors that went on behind the closed doors of the restaurant. They even claim to have found an actual animatronic from the place in working condition, one that was more of an unused scrappy. The two of you did a little research and found out that the animatronic was actually nicknamed Springtrap. There wasn't much else info on it though. It seemed to be relatively unknown. You arrive at the park at around 11.30. You didn't want to come this late, but this is the only night that Jason would be available to go. The park closes at midnight, so you should have plenty of time to get through the attraction and leave. The two of you make your way over to the ticket stands and buy two tickets for the Fazbear Horror Attraction. Walking into the park, you can tell that the place is pretty dead, especially for a Friday night. Everybody must have left already. One of the few people walking by happens to be an employee, so you ask him where the attraction is, and he points you in the right direction. Moving in that direction, it doesn't take long until you see the big glowing sign reading Fazbear, the horror attraction, with a big illuminated Freddy Fazbear head moving its mouth up and down above the door. The kid manning the entrance is so absorbed in his cell phone that when you hand him your tickets, all that comes out of his mouth is a barely audible grunting noise. Just a typical teenager who is clearly unhappy to have the Friday night shift. You assume the right to push open the door and step into the building. The door slowly closes behind you and that's when you notice a big warning sign stating that if anybody is to steal or move any of the props, they will be heavily fined. The floors are filled with fog to the point where you can't even see your feet, and the walls are decorated with old posters and torn pictures, mostly just the restaurant's characters, poorly drawn by kids. It's creepy, but it's not scary, says Jason. You reassure him that it will get scarier. You just walk through the doors anyway. Jason puts his hand on your back and nudges you forward to move down the hall. Moving forward reveals more props. Walls still covered with crumpled papers with poorly drawn pictures of the characters on them. Up ahead there's what appears to be a glowing jack-o'-lantern on the floor, but upon getting closer, you realize it's the head of Chica, one of the animatronic characters. Do you think that's the actual head? You ask. Yeah, it better be, he says. Is this really supposed to be scary? You admit the atmosphere does have a creepy feel to it, but so far, it's not scary. Hopefully it's building up to something good. Walking down a little more, the two of you come up to an intersecting hallway. You freeze in your tracks when you think you could hear something moving around the corner. It's probably just other people going through the attraction, says Jason. Do you really think we're the only people in here? Yes, I do actually, you tell him. Jason jokingly pushes you forward towards the corner, but as you turn your head, something screams and lunges towards you. You let out a shriek of terror and fall to your knees, only to realize it's just an old Freddy Fazbear costume. It's attached to some kind of remote handle on the wall. It's designed to scare people. You get back up on your feet to have Jason laughing in your face. Alright, you douche, it would have scared you too, you tell him. The remote rod holding the Freddy suit rolls back to hide the suit behind the corner. You walk up to it to get a closer look at it. It seems pretty genuine. You call Jason over to come feel it, but he doesn't respond. Jason? Jason, where are you? Hey, check this out. You turn around to see Jason in a room across the hall by some kind of arcade machine. You think it still works? He asks. No, of course not. You respond while approaching the room. Jason continues to fiddle with all of the buttons, hoping something will happen. Alright, let's keep going. Your heart skips a beat at the sight of a demonic face popping up on the screen of the game. You turn to see Jason's face, noticeably full of fear. Wow, that got me, he says. 
Let's keep going, it seems to be getting better. You keep walking down the halls and suddenly you notice there's no more fog on the ground. They must have turned off the fog machines for whatever reason. They definitely paid attention to detail with the place. There are papers all over the walls, scattered across the floor, fake blood stains on the tiled floor, even pipes and wires dangling from the ceiling to give it a broken down look. It almost feels as though it's the real restaurant. Of course, you wouldn't really know. As you keep moving down the dark hallway, preparing yourself for any more jump scares, you notice you can't hear another pair of footsteps behind you. You turn around. Jason's missing again. You call his name, but there's no response. You call louder, still no response. Where the hell did he go? A sound comes from behind you, in the direction you are walking in. You turn back around, to see the figure of a man down the hall. It's too dark to make out any features, but you know he's staring at you. The motionless figure of the man down the hall sends a chill down your spine, and you're too disturbed to try and rationalize the situation to think that maybe it could just be another park visitor. You move your leg back, about to begin walking backwards, but at that instant, the figure down the hall turns around and walks away into the darkness ahead. You're left standing there, not knowing what to think or do. Thank you.